Today I'm going to break with my normal rule of avoiding anything that involves you know, news and whatnot to discuss one thing about a post I had yesterday. <clears throat> I put out that um, a link to a news article that said there was some pressure on uh, the president of the United States and some governors to call out the National Guard on some uh, uh, protesters on college campuses. So the National Guard is a very militarized unit, uh, and protesters are protesters. There's a, a world of difference in between rolling armored vehicles and, and rifles in and, and protesters in tents on college campuses. Uh, the reason this is different than anything else I've done in a very long time is I want to talk about my dad, who was a National Guardsman at Kent State back when the National Guard got called out. Uh, my family's from Ohio. He was in the National Guard. He was called out that day, although he was not on the Hill. Um, but he was in that unit and he was there for the multiple days of that particular disaster. My my aunt was a student uh, at that school, but was not present that day. Uh, my grandfather would not let her go to campus, having seen and heard the news and, and just she wasn't allowed to go up there. I think my uncle went and drug her off or something. Uh Figuratively speaking, not literally. Uh, but my dad, um, when I was a kid, never talked about that event. I knew he was there. He never talked about it. I never really asked. I don't think my sisters did either. Uh, but he never volunteered information. It was Dad wasn't that kind of guy. Uh, but when I got out of the Army um, in 1996, uh, I was about to start college. I was spending some time with my dad. And, and uh, uh, I asked him about it. And, and he spoke to me very frankly about that event. And he's passed away now, uh, but he uh, I, I'd never seen that look on my dad's face before. It was a look of, of deep, deep, deep regret and sorrow and depression. And, and this is a guy who had two strokes and, you know, could barely it was in a wheelchair. And but it just his entire attitude just changed. And it wasn't that, you know. The stories that have been written about that have been like, oh, the National Guard went in killing. They wanted to kill. They wanted to no. yeah, fuck all that. Um, so now you know, fast forward to today, who the hell cares? Well, let me explain the national guard as I'm aware of it. I'm an army veteran. I've, I've known guardsmen. I've worked with guardsmen. I've, I've done field exercises with them. Uh, although I got out in 96, I did not, I was not in the war on terror. I, I do have friends who were, uh, I worked in the defense and aerospace sector at that point in time as a civilian. Uh, I'm a scientist now, so I worked on the engineering side. Um, but uh, I, I know combat veterans. I know a lot of them, uh, too many, uh, actually. Uh, they're good friends. I don't say I know too many, but we have too many combat veterans. We shouldn't have nearly as many. We should have a world at peace. But the um, the point is, my dad told me very frankly that, yeah, there was protests, and yes, it was large. And was the National Guard called out for real reasons, or was it called out for political reasons to make somebody somewhere score points and look good to their base? Um, that's a question for everyone else to answer. I've read a lot of history books on Kent State. I really think there were multiple times when the student protesters could have backed down and saved everybody the trouble because they were really wrong. The governor could have called the National Guard back out. The governor was really wrong. The police were wrong. It was just a tragic series of people being stupidly wrong caused Kent State. So the National Guard was there for three days. Uh, and these are not active duty army personnel. These are people who are, my dad was a software engineer. These are people who are pharmacists, mechanics. These are not people who do this every day. They were on this hill. They were under a lot of pressure. They want to go home to their families. Some of the people in the protest might be their family, right? These are neighbors. These are not, you know, somebody from across the ocean someplace. Um, and yes, I know in the current protest, there might be people from overseas. There might be people who aren't students. And in Kent State, that was the case as well. But there are kids in those protests who are students and locals and neighbors. So you call it the National Guard, you're really calling out the guard on your neighbors. You're rolling military units in on American citizens. That's the PR of it. That's the way it's going to look. Uh, so after three days, the guard was tired. The guard was exhausted. The guard is not trained for this sort of stuff. The protests got loud. The guard got loud. But somebody in the crowd said, you know, was taunting the guard, guard fire, guard fire, guard fire. These guys are exhausted. You know, how the hell are they going to tell the difference between somebody's over there saying fire, somebody over here saying fire? Um, so the story, one of the 
15 different stories I've heard said somebody in the National Guard had a starter's pistol and fired it in the air. If you're that tired and you have M1 carbines, M60 machine guns, M1 Garand, and, and you fire 67 shots, you're going to have a lot more people. And you're actually trying to kill people with a with a, a group of protesters that are that densely packed, that close together, piled up on top of each other. 67 shots results in 67 injuries, if not more from people trampling over each other. I don't think the guard, and the way my, my father explained it, was the guard was trying to... the the protest was coming at the guard slowly and the guard was freaked out. Right. So the guard, somebody in the guard side fired. And I, the way it sounded from my dad was they were trying to lay down suppressing fire in the dirt in between the protest and the students or in between the protests themselves. Cause they didn't want to, they want to get hurt. Um, but what the guard didn't realize and what active duty soldiers might have is that when you shoot into the dirt, sometimes things ricochet back up. They don't always stay in the dirt. Uh, and if you look at where the, the fatalities were, it was off on the edges. It looks like things are ricocheted out. So that was ancient history, right? Way, way back. But it's the one that gets pulled up every time when people want to talk about the government and gun control and why we need to have guns. But that, that particular event, man, that, that it had the students been armed and turned into a shootout, how many people would have died, right? So fast forward today, we've got these protests on college campuses and people saying, call it the National Guard. And I posted something that said, you know, hey, this is a bad idea. I had people coming at me on one of the pro social profiles going, that's fine. We need to kill these people anyway. Shoot them, kill them, death, destruction, blood, mayhem, whatever. And I don't think it's everybody. I think it's a very, very, very small, shockingly loud, little tiny group of people who are going to sit behind their keyboards and say, kill those protesters. They don't have to go do it. They don't have to live with that regret of shooting a neighbor. They don't have to live with that regret of shooting a, a young uh, adult, a, a teenager, a, essentially a kid. I'm 52. I can call a 22-year-old college student a kid at this point. But my point is calling the guard out on American citizens who are exercising their right to protest, as long as those protests are peaceful, is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Anybody who disagrees with that, I'm happy to have a legitimate discussion with, but you're going to have a hard time convincing me that the guard is a great idea to call out there and just start, you know, shooting people. So, you know, my father's passed on and, and it's difficult to ask him questions now. And most of the people that were involved in that event have, have passed on because it was so long ago. Uh, but I've read a lot about that event and I, I look at it and say, students were wrong, protesters were gone, cops were wrong. We don't need another tragedy at that level. What we need is to, for once in our lives in this country, for once in this generation, sit down, talk it out, stop, you know, going, oh, you're wrong and you do it my way or else. No, where you're wrong, do it my way or else. Great. Let's call out the, you know, let's, let's call out the dogs, right? Let's call out the, the armed forces, get the National Guard, go in there and bust some head. That's not the answer. A an actual rational discussion is the answer. And if you're protesting what's going on in other countries, that's great, but we don't have any control over that, right? So some of these protests are aimed at, at things going on in, in uh, other parts of the world that we can't control. We don't, I, I personally, I think we should stop lending aid to countries that are doing bad things to other countries. We should stop paying for wars all over the place, but that's, that's another video. But calling the National Guard out on American citizens on college campuses when people are actually exercising a a protest uh it's just idiotic it's not going to end well it's going to end very very badly uh and uh the the guardsmen are going to have to live with that the rest of their lives and they don't nobody should have to live with that kind of thing the rest of their lives uh so i hope everybody has a great day i'm sure 58 people are going to unlike this video in 10 seconds and i don't care uh but this one is from my dad who was the reason i've got the gaming background is my dad was a a, a software engineer <laughs> not the most vicious guy on the planet uh from uh he was start he was a he was an engineer from the 60s on up until he retired in in uh, uh early 2000s when he was no longer physically able to go to work after his stroke uh but he was an avid video game player uh and he was one of the reasons i'm an avid sci-fi reader and he's actually one of the reasons uh i became a scientist um and now work in, in more engineering than science but um i I think if he were alive today and he saw that kind of call, I think he'd be the first one dialing congressmen and, you know, governors and whoever else he could and being like, this is, this is idiotic. And this is a guy who was relatively quiet uh, his entire life. He would much rather just read a book uh, and be left alone 
uh, than get involved in anything. Uh, but this one, I think he would stand up and get involved in. That's why I, I felt like I had to come out and say something. Uh, everybody have a great day. Uh, I'm sure I'll get back to book videos as soon as I finish reading the one I just started, uh, which is actually another reread for me. But um, And uh, yes, I am hard at work on my next novel. So uh, I hope everybody has a great day. Uh, click like, subscribe, follow um, wherever you saw me or just drop me a line. Everybody have a great one.